I'd like to welcome all of you to Trend Magazine Santa Fe Chefs Roundtable, where we're going to be talking with local area chefs about the Santa Fe restaurant scene, where it's going, uh, where it's been, where it is now, uh, what are your major influences, um, and what you're doing next. So to start, uh, let's go around the table here and introduce yourselves and your restaurants and um, Mr. Christian, would you like to start? Yeah. My name is Chris. I'm the executive chef at Dostoria da Cis. It's one Italian restaurant in Santa Fe. Anything about your restaurant you'd like to talk about? Well, I'm trying to change a little bit. Um, Osteria is an old restaurant. Like they are in there, I think, it's like 15 years. Mm -hmm. I kind of change all the menu. Okay. And give it a little bit of touch of modern. Right. But I'm trying to, um, I don't know, I'm trying to buy like everything local. Uh, all my fish are wild caught. Mm -hmm. And now we try to buy like all the meat, like hormone free, uh, free range. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, for the future, like I, I like to play a lot with the special mm -hmm. and make some fusion, especially right. with, the, with the New Mexican product, like green okay. chili and this kind of stuff. And uh, it's kind of nice to mix like Italian food mm -hmm. with New Mexican. Uh, with New Mexico, man. And I have fun all the time. Great. I'm Wei Chen Carls, and I'm a new transplant here in Santa Fe, coming from Washington, D.C., uh, where I, I'm the creator and owner of Open Kitchen. And we, unlike a restaurant, we are a culinary events uh, venue and, and planning a, a presence here in Santa Fe. So we take our guests behind the kitchen and have them cook and experience um, what it's like to be a chef. Uh, whether it's a pop-up wine dinner or a cooking class or team building with corporations, that's what we do. And so with the presence here in Santa Fe, we'll take actually the experience to people's sh kitchen, uh, whereas in D.C. we actually have three kitchen space where people come in and, and really have that total experience. So I'm looking forward to learning all of the um, insights and trying to combine what is um, new and different and what the guests want to have. So, thank you. My name is Rich Friedman. I'm the owner and chef at the Tea House. And uh, uh, I've been involved with the Tea House for about three years and pretty much transformed it from a place where people came to drink, drink tea to a full service restaurant. And it's kind of a strange combination. It's a, it's a, it, my, my food is uh, Mediterranean inspired and um, there's not a lot of tea dr uh, drinking in the Mediterranean uh, uh, areas, but it seems it, this strange combination seems to be working. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to, to getting to know all you better and, and uh, hearing what you have to say. My name is Charles Dale. Um, I have a place here called Bush Bistro. It's about two and a half years old, and um, it's Paris Bistro cu cuisine combined with grandmother cooking based in the French traditions, but with some um, modern techniques applied. The wine list is specifically French and American, and uh, there's kind of a totality there between food and wine. We don't have a full liquor license, so it's all about matching food, wine, and to the, you know, to create a kind of unique experience in Santa Fe. We're kind of the anti-Southwestern restaurant, I'd say. Uh, the only thing that has chili are the mussels and, it, and, it, and it's chili flakes. Uh, and, and that's not to say anything against green and red. I'm just saying that, that um, I think that, as, that Santa Fe is in a great position to have different kinds of restaurants that have their own identity as opposed to being Santa Fe restaurants. So there you go. It's working. Great. Right? Yes, so, it is. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm Chef Josh Gerwin, uh, Dr. Feelgood's uh, Kitchen, Butcher Shop, and Bakery. Uh, I focus on local sustainable agriculture and kind of do a New Mexico fusion cuisine with a little bit of worldly touches all over the, the place and different cuisines. And uh, yeah, just focus on local sustainability. So you, that's where you get the New Mexico fusion cuisine. And the Butcher Shop is all local meats and all artisanal charcuterie and fresh sausages and the bakery makes fresh bread every day. <laughs> <laughs> Croissants and cinnamon rolls and you know actually a French French bakery you know doing mm -hmm. true laminate doughs and uh, right. artisanal breads. 
I didn't know you had a bakery. Is that it's in the here. butcher shop? Yeah. Oh, cool. Right. Great. So that's that's it. Great. You don't like to eat a croissant. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andrew Cooper. I'm the executive chef of Terra Restaurant inside the Four Seasons Ranch Run Cantado Hotel. Uh, we focus in on American regional cuisine with Southwest accents. We go to the farmer's markets. We go to local farms. Uh, we buy as much local as possible. And then what we try and do is get the community involved as much as possible. Cooking classes, chef's tables, uh, culinary venture tours, going hunting for or foraging for porcini mushrooms in the season and just having a good time with local local cuisine. And now we're also incorporating local beer, wine, and spirits, so that's what we have fun doing. Great, thank you. You know, we're all blessed to live in Santa Fe, which is this wonderful artistic community full of, you know, artists, designers, and writers. Um, how does this artistic community influence your restaurants? Does it inspire you? Does it, you know, make you more creative? How has it impacted your restaurant? Well, I don't think it's so much the artists. I think it's the community itself that inspires us. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking around this table alone, I mean, different backgrounds, different nationalities, different types of restaurants, I think that's what really inspires us, and mm -hmm. that transforms into the food. Uh, I mean, looking around the table, every one of us has different styles of cooking, and I think people are attracted to the styles of cooking that we, we portray. Uh, especially, I think, what attracts us most about this, mm -hmm. this town, this community, is that, yes, there's tons of art here, there's tons of history, tons of music, tons of things to do, but it's all about supporting the local community and, and just having fun doing that. So uh, being that I see almost every one of you at the farmer's market, you know, we're all sure that common denominator of going to the market, uh, sharing the love of local cuisine, mm -hmm. and just inspiring others. So I think we feed off each other mm -hmm. and go from there. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd like to address it. Uh, here we are on Canyon Road, right? Arguably one of the great art streets in America. And um, I personally really enjoy, probably once a month, once every couple of months, just walking up and down and going, wandering into the galleries. And, um, you know, there's something about stimulating <coughs> your artistic sense through the visual because we're all tactile, gustatory, smell. And when I can stimulate myself through what I see, it, it then reverberates onto the other senses and helps me be more creative. I don't think I, you know, there's a point at which you kind of stop being inspired by things you taste because you've done so much different kinds of food, mm -hmm. and then you also want to avoid plagiarism. Right. <laughs> so, but but it's very it, it's cool to go and and see. Uh, somebody's express, you know, expression of their artistic intensity, and that, I think, translates subconsciously and subliminally mm -hmm. into, into new work. Right. Not to mention the symbiotic relationship between gallery owners, restaurateurs, and artists as mm -hmm. well. You know, they're, they're guests of ours, and so you know, we go to their galleries, they come to our restaurants, they recommend our restaurants. Mm -hmm. So there's this symbiotic thing that, that is on a business level right. that I think is very important in this city as well. And it's funny you mention <laughs> that true. because uh, you know, we've always done wine dinners, and mm -hmm. now there's you know, art tours, art walks, there's culinary walks. Uh, what we recently started doing at the hotel is art dinners, mm -hmm. and what we do is we combine a food and wine dinner, but we compare we combine it with an artist. So mm -hmm. an artist gives me, for example, he'll give me four pieces of his work, you know, a rough sketch, mm -hmm. and then as it progresses, and then I get inspired by that and come up with a menu based on the artwork. Super. So we started doing that yeah. recently, and you know, it's working out fantastic. It's it's inspiring to me because, like you said, after a while. Food is great, but you know, seeing something different than trying to look at a piece of art on the wall and say, okay, how could I transform that into food? And mm -hmm. it's working. Right. I've done a similar thing with, uh, with tea and art here on Canyon Road, the gallery where they, um, we take five of their artists and, uh, and we basically match their art and their personality to a particular tea. Mm -hmm. And then people come in and get to, uh, get to experience and, and it was, it was Quite fun. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. And the, the other thing is, I really agree with you on the on the sense of uh, the art community. It's it's part of the progressivism of this 
city. There's a, there's great history and tradition, but there's also kind of an openness, which I think goes to new restaurants and new foods. We're seeing the new gastro pubs, everything that's coming in new. I think there is a general openness in this city and a thirst for things that are new and unique and interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to also share that I recently did a dinner and uh, my background is Vietnamese. And uh, living here and traveling the world, Italy and, and whatnot, France, I recently did a great a dish where I did a home traditional peasant food, um, uh, pork belly. So it's a caramelized pork belly, but really paired with a, a watermelon salsa. So it's really combining the various cultures, the, the fusion of colors, uh, which has always been my passion is I think when you are true to the, the colors of the ingredients you are eating seasonally and eating healthy and creating a, a beautiful plate as well a, as tasteful mm -hmm. so that was a, a pleasurable experience for me right yeah if I can ask something like I think every chef is a is one artist like mm -hmm. many times we have to match like the color Mm -hmm. Not just about the food, about the plate mm -hmm. in itself. Right. And if the taste good, just not to look good. We need things like everybody, have a, every chef is a little artist. Right. Plus, I think it's like, you know, for an artist make a painting, Sure. the painting is done, it's in there. We have to recreate the yeah. same painting over and over, <laughs> and it's gone in like two minutes. Right. I do sculpture with the animal bones. Right. Could be like uh, many times, like uh, the food, uh, or the, the art is mm -hmm. like, but especially with the color, but I'm sure 100% every chef is an artist. Right. Well, we do eat with our eyes, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, right? Well, it, it's been about 30 years now since, you know, Mark Miller burst on the scene here with the Kairi uh, Cafe, um, basically creating the wave that was become, you know, Santa Fe cuisine. And as that wave is probably crested now, where do you, where's the next wave of uh, cuisine coming from to, for, for Santa Fe. How's it going to take us, take the city and its cuisine to the next level? Honestly, I think it's just going back to the basics, real simple food. I mean, mm -hmm. you go out to eat now and you don't see all the foo foo plates, you don't see the oils and the uh, the foams and all that stuff. All that stuff has been done, it's, it's over and done with. Mm -hmm. I think now it's just giving people really good food. Uh, presenting it well, it's not you know overly touched, not overly messed with. And I think it's just giving them really good, down-to-earth food. Mm -hmm. you and know. Oh, and yeah. I think also very interactive. You know, I know that you know you have a great chef's table right in the mm -hmm. kitchen, yeah. and I think people want to eat mm -hmm. th through their eyes and learning. And so when they do eat a dish. And I know Josh, your your ki your kitchen is right there. You know, very similar to Open Kitchen. And so when when it's an anticipation of the food coming out. So by the time they get something, it they've already sort of experienced mm -hmm. the flavors. And so I think that's another element of the direction. I also mm -hmm. my customer go to Andrew for I, I don't remember what is the event, but they have so much fun uh -huh. at the chef table. Uh -huh. Uh, I think they are awesome to entertain people. And plus, they they can have good food mm -hmm. and uh, and have fun with all the mm -hmm. kitchen stuff. Right. And uh, I see with my eyes like a couple of times, and uh, I love the crew of fans. Right. And, uh, and they're really funny guys. I mean, for me, it was just about you know everyone's looking at the newspapers, everyone's looking at the dining section, everyone's looking at Top Chef, mm -hmm. Top Iron Chef. Right. Chef. Yes. You know, so everyone wants to see what it's like, what we do on a day and day basis. Uh, people always think that this kid, this industry is so glorified and, you know it's mm -hmm. easy to right. do and you know that's why you have so many people go to the cooking schools for it but once they realize what it's really like behind the scene it's right. not as glorified <laughs> as <laughs> some people would hope for but the reason why I do the chef's tale the reason why I create the chef's tale is for that for that little niche so that way they could feel what it's like behind the stove so that way they could see all the flames people getting burned cut you know I'm not saying that happens every day but <laughs> right. you know and on a chef's table of course but you know, it's exciting to see what it's like behind the scenes and, you know, because the guests, when they're sitting on the dining room, all they see is it comes out of mm -hmm. two doors, you know, mm -hmm. the wait staff doors, or in your restaurant, you see it right at the bar. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, a lot of people don't get to experience what it's like behind the scenes that it doesn't come from just two doors. It comes right. from five different areas in the kitchen, and the yelling and screaming that goes on behind the scenes is a little bit different. So. Right, right. It's definitely not the calm. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. 
But I think that's the part of educating the guests is that we, we always say, areas. yeah, we mm -hmm. always say we want slow food mm -hmm. versus fast food. Right. But the slow food takes time. You know, it, it takes, it's not just five minutes. It takes beyond that. And so I think if they see that, they can understand and appreciate mm -hmm. more what it takes to, to have whole, good, homemade food. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is part of the education that's fun too. And I think people love to talk about food as well as eat good food. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think there's no place they enjoy talking about good food better than around good food. Right. right. And, uh, right yeah. and, and so I find that um, I like to be able to get out and talk to my diners and say they like it. They often want to ask how things are made. They mm -hmm. want to find out where ingredients are from. Mm -hmm. And that's to me part of the pleasure of, of my job. Right. You know, it's, uh, Right. And it's also fun, like when I see Josh and Christian at the farmer's market, you know, the three of us gather around, we're all wearing our chef jackets, and all of a sudden people start, you know, cleaning clothes, trying to say, like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> you know, you know, they want to know where you're you know, shopping. Yeah. You know, what can we do with these mushrooms from Chef Shoes, or what can we do with this from, you know, Matt Romero? But, you know, it's, it's exciting. It builds awareness in the community. It creates a sense of, of fun, you know, right. excitement. Right. Well, Andrew brought up, you know, shows like Top Chef and, you know, the, all the Food Network shows. Is that serving to homogenize food across the nation? So where, you know, food in New York is the same as it is in Houston, is the same as it is in Santa Fe? Or is yeah. or are there still distinctive elements to cuisine in various regions? And if so, you know, what makes Santa Fe distinctive in this overall restaurant scene? So this is something that I've grappled with a lot because... You know, you're in a region, and there's a, there's a preconception of what the food should be mm -hmm. in the region. And fundamentally, if you go around the world to the best restaurants and, and the restaurants that people will recommend in their own towns, it's not so much about the region, but about, you know, if there's a, it's a chef-driven restaurant, it's about the chef. Mm -hmm. And it's about that person's take on food and it doesn't necessarily have to be specific to right. to the regionality. It does have to have something to do with the products that you can get in the best right. situation. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the reasons you guys don't see me at the farmer's market is because I'm growing it. So right. I'm spending three hours in my garden every day bringing stuff in for, for the restaurant. And to me that inspires the cooking. Um, it, it, it's not only regional, but it's also seasonal and timely. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's beyond seasonal. It's really sort of like, okay, what came in yesterday mm -hmm. that I need to use? And then once the season for that is over, which could be three weeks, you mm -hmm. know, what else are we going to plant and, and, and that kind of stuff? Um, so you know, getting back to where Santa Fe is going, I think that I hope it's going in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Because for all of us who live here, it's wonderful to be able to have a variety of cuisine as evidenced by the people at this table, and also some of the people who are not at this table. Mm -hmm. Some of the new young restaurateurs who have come out of the gate and, and are trying to do different things. And, and um, I, hope that there's, I hope there's more of it. Mm -hmm. Because that kind of stimulus is going to attract more people to Santa Fe. You know, one of the things in your question related to 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and I would say that when Mark came in here and with Geronimo and a lot of the other restaurants that came in around that time, that Santa Fe got on the culinary map. Mm -hmm. And then Santa Fe kind of rested on its laurels for a little while. Mm -hmm. And now I think we're seeing this regeneration. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope the answer to where is it going is we don't know. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> like a painting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> abstract. Yeah. And I think that is true is that in my travels to Italy or France, definitely those countries have very regional foods or wine. And I think the U.S. and particularly the uh, Santa Fe, the eclectic Mm -hmm. of, of it is probably mm -hmm. what makes it special. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So w where does Santa Fe then fit into the national culinary scene? Um, well, I think as the other yeah. places fit into our culinary scene is they're going to draw inspiration from what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. We're going to see what they're doing there. We're all going to do our own thing like uh, everybody at the table said. Right. I'm going to do my own thing based on what Chef Dale says. I'm doing it for me. It's what I love doing. Right. So 
and that's why I'm doing what I do, and I, I do the butcher shop and the bakery because I want my own bread. So it's there's other places in New York doing it. There's places right. in California doing it. There's places across the seas doing it. So it's well, our place on the culinary map is we're in Santa Fe and right. they're in New York, and it's so. It's, do you, you see know, influences coming from New York? So what's happening in New York or what's happening in LA or Chicago? Well, I mean, do they turn up here? Well, I mean, since we have so many new restaurants opening up and so many new young restaurateurs coming in, everyone has their own style. Mm -hmm. So there's people that do molecular gastronomy. It's not for everyone, but mm -hmm. you can find that in Santa Fe. You know, go to certain restaurants, they have that. Traditional Italian, traditional New Mexican, American regional. I mean, mm -hmm. it's everything is here. French, you know. Mm -hmm. It's one of the great melting pots of Santa Fe. There is so many people and cultures and different things here. You, Everything. And, right. and I think we have to remember that we're a tourist town a lot of the year. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is the more variety, the better. Just like a real city. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. right. The more better places there are, the more people that want to come visit us, and then they don't have to say, oh, where are we going to go eat? You know, you, you go to New York, you, it's not where you're going to eat, it's like where do you not get to eat? <laughs> we right. 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 Yeah. In Santa Fe, there's still a ton of great places to mm -hmm. go, but like you said, there's, there is variety. And, Mm -hmm. There's multiple different places they can go and have a good time within Santa Fe and great meals of all kinds of different food. Right. And what's great is, like, for me, working at the hotel, they could only, the guests could only dine at a restaurant a couple nights a week. So right. when they're here for five to ten days, you know, of course I'm going to showcase everyone else in town. You know, come dine with me one night, two nights, and then, you know, see what's going on in town. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. The, the amazing things about Santa Fe, like, I think we are kind of like a tight community, and uh, it's not much competition. And uh, I love to collaborate with everybody. Mm -hmm. We do it many, many times, and it's funny. While mm -hmm. like uh, I can use the idea of Andrew and incorporate mine or mm -hmm. e everybody, but like most of the event is always funny to book with another chef in here, and right. we have friends. Right. And I don't know. I see Josh yesterday for uh, uh, cooking with the kids. I see. Yeah. And the last time at the farmer market, uh, uh, Dale. When I want to see you last time. <laughs> outside, oh, outside of the tattoo <laughs> shop. Outside of the tattoo shop. I was in your place. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. all right. but I mean, with all the outside organizations that we belong to, everyone mm -hmm. gets to know each other. Everyone gets to see each other. So we all collaborate. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's one of the reasons why we join all these outside organizations is that we we could collaborate on different things. Mm -hmm. So what what are the you know, we're in Santa Fe. What are the local characteristics here that define Santa Fe's food? I mean, is there anything that, that you know, we have red and green chili, for instance. We have blue corn. Is that, would you consider those things to be defining characteristics of the, co of the cuisine here or just part of the distinctiveness and the diversity that's here? Can, can I say something? Sure. For me, the green chili, like, coming from Italy mm -hmm. to here, like, I never tasted before. Right. I remember the first time, it's like a really spicy one, I cry, it's like a <laughs> <laughs> as well, but like, uh, I remember when I when I taste the mild, for mm -hmm. me, it, you know, when a chef find a new ingredient, right. something you know, you never taste is amazing, and uh, I remember, like, my boss told me, like, okay, enough with the green chili, you know, for you, it's, uh, <laughs> for you it's something new, but right. for the other people, it's in here, like, right. uh, but I remember, like, I make everything with green chili, lasagna, ravioli, whatever is right. Italian, I mix this green chili, and, I love it. But I think it's super characteristic the green chili. Right. Same for the pizza. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. Like for one Italian, put the green chili on, right. on the pizza. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, my inspiration to open Open Kitchen uh, really came from sitting at the community table at um, Cafe Pasquale mm -hmm. in 2007. I think that the essence of, of Santa Fe really is the openness, the fusion. I mean, they, there's local f cuisine, but also global cuisine. And just the, the freshness, the, the seasonal use of ingredients, um, that is my takeaway mm -hmm. uh, of what it means to be here. Mm -hmm. So it is as much an attitude as anything else? It really is more of a spirit, yeah, that, that attitude. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's also exciting. Like, for instance, when I was watching the Food Network and I saw Josh on there hunting buffalo, <laughs> <laughs> like right in our backyard, it's like right there. You know? Right. We do have a bit of everything here. Right. And what, one of the things that is, you know, a current trend here is we have a lot of new breweries and distilleries and cider manufacturers opening up. How does that contribute to what you're doing? Does that influence you in any a way? A lot. Because you know, yeah. we do a lot of wine dinners using local. 
But I mean, what's, what's amazing about here is that, yes, we have the local produce, we have the local meats, seafood, of course, mm -hmm. we have to get flown in or right. driven in. But I mean, the local beer, wine, and spirits that are right here in our backyards, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And we have Santa Fe Brewing Company, you have uh, KGB Spirits, you have all the Boss different, dis yeah. yeah, all the different beer distilleries. I mean, it's insane how mm -hmm. many are right here in driving distance. Right. The pl plus is not just uh, about the wine dinner, but like I love the Santa Fe Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. I love to do beer dinner and compare stuff. Right. I don't know, use the Java for make a yeah. chocolate sauce. Uh huh. Yeah, well, it's great too because the the Tapped magazine we're rated like number two in New Mexico for like beer vacations. Mm -hmm. I think Colorado's number one, New Mexico is number two. Right. So I think it's great because it's bringing people that are interested in artisanal products right. here, and they're going to these breweries. And I I know I work with all the local breweries. I'm pretty sure all these guys do. So those local breweries know us, and, and they send those local people, or those people on vacation then over to our restaurants. So it's definitely working with the local breweries and distilleries and wineries is, mm -hmm. is an integral part of, you know, at least for me, it's like keeping it local and sustainable right. and, and whatnot, and you know, just working with each other. And like everybody said, we see each other around. And mm -hmm. work then, with it also, everybody. Yeah, then it also makes it more fun, because you don't have to do just your traditional wine dinner. You could do yeah. a cocktail dinner, mm -hmm. you could do a beer dinner, right? and we change it up a bit. Right. So, Well, I mean, Josh just mentioned two things that have seemed to be trends starting up around the nation, you know, lo like local, or even hyper-local, and artisanal products. Do all, all of you sort of in, use those type of products in your, how do you go about sourcing them, or do you make them yourselves? Is that something that's influencing your restaurants, this whole movement towards local and artisanal products? I mean, I, I guess you can't get more local than growing it yourself. Right. right? And, and then taking yes. it into your kitchen and, and making stuff with it. But, um, you know, if you're referring to things like uh, canning and preserves and those mm -hmm. kinds of things, you know, once we've got the bounty of the, um, uh, of the season, yeah, sometimes you can't really use it all because the tourist season sort of starts to wane at the mm -hmm. end of September, mid or early to mid-October, just as everything's finally coming in from the garden, the rest of mm -hmm. it. You know, we'll be lucky if we have great tomatoes by September this right. year. Right. So, yeah, fried green tomatoes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, yeah, you know, pickling, canning, uh, preserving, all of those are, are, are fun and neat things to do. You have to be careful when you do it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right? Because, uh, you know, we do have the health of our uh, patrons in mind, but um, yeah, making things like uh, terrines and mm -hmm. you know briette and those kinds of things, Kaiser right. pork. You're using Kaiser pork in your in your uh, butcher shop. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We'll be bringing you preserves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but, uh, our, our Andrew mentioned that this year has been an awesome uh, year for the mushroom. Mm -hmm. Just back from Taos last week, I have Chantrella, I have Porcini. Mm. Mm -hmm. I use some of the restaurants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. use some of the restaurants, but right. most I use for <laughs> for myself. Yeah. Right. And uh, but I don't know with the porcini like the smart things to do is dry it up, and you can use it in the winter. And you know they are like, you pick them up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm proud when I use stuff I, I pick up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something different. I mean, it's actually you know, a lot of places like New York you can't go porcini mushroom hunting. Yeah. Here you go right up to the ski basin or go up to Taos and. You know, for a couple hours, you go hiking, you come back with tons of mushrooms. Right. Oh, well, you can believe the amount of a chantre, right? I can imagine all the rain we're having. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you there next weekend. <laughs> right. In oh. the end, I think it's all about great ingredients. And, mm -hmm. you know, great local ingredients are the, we all want it. The, the, mm -hmm. the issue is, can we get it? And mm -hmm. can we get it in, a cons in any kind of consistent basis? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I think there are, there's, a, there's a movement going on to try to improve the distribution, which helps mm -hmm. tremendously. Sure. I know the farmer's market's involved now, and they're, they're uh, uh, involved with a, a local distribution company, which is a big issue uh, for all of us who, you know, we can get to the farmer's market once a week, but we can't do it every day. Right. <laughs> and, right. Uh, yeah. I think that's what's also exciting is that, you know, Charles, you have your own garden. And now, you know, we have our own garden at the hotel too. And mm -hmm. it's just fun to take people on tours to the garden and say, you know, try this, you know, cherry tomato right, right. on the vine or look at these cucumbers and zucchinis that are coming out. I mean, it's just exciting. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, you know, it's uh, 30 minutes of zen, you know, to go out there and just, you know, 
enjoy the gardening mm-hmm. and water the plants and pick everything off. But then at you know four or five o'clock when my cooks go out there with their containers with their lettuces and beets mm-hmm. and whatever it might be, and then walk through the dining room, everyone's looking like, what is that? What is he <laughs> right. So uh-huh. they'll have, I'll have what he's, you know, bringing back. <laughs> right. It's exciting. It's mm-hmm. fresh. Right. Right. Alice Waters created years right. ago. Yeah, and now everyone's, you know, if you're not on the bandwagon, you know, you're not in this industry. Right. Because knowing where your food comes from, especially this day and age with GMOs, GEOs, Monsanto's, mm-hmm. everyone's, you know, really concerned about right. where is this food coming from. Yeah. So, I mean, a number of you have worked in places outside of Santa Fe. Yes. Um, what's the, what's the, how does the, how is it different working here? In, in every <laughs> part where I work, it's kind of like, it's the same job. What, mm-hmm. what changed many times is the, like, the ingredient, mm-hmm. the expectation of the people. Like, I don't know, like, uh, I like Santa Fe. Like, uh, great community. Like, I love my customers so much. Mm-hmm. I love all the association uh, uh, we have in Santa Fe. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, cooking with the kids is my favorite right. myself. Right. Uh, we go to the school, we teach the kids how to cook. But m- the things more important is like how to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, right. I remember everyone kids told me like, oh, I don't like tomato. But do you like pizza? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the rest stuff is tomato. <laughs> oh, I don't know, like, um, well, what is that? That one is a carrot. Like, right. uh, oh, no, no, no. Carrots is like this. I don't have skin. Like, no, the real carrots, you have to, <laughs> you have to peel it. Yeah. But like, uh, I don't, and, man, I think almost everybody's on cooking with the kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. And uh, I don't know, it's a, such a like, an, in that one for me, that's mm-hmm. it. Like when I see the smile of a kid or just like a kid, taste the ravioli and stuff and say like, oh my God, what is it? <laughs> and it's like. Right. I, I mean, love the whole idea of cooking with kids, what makes it so exciting here is that teaching kids at a young age what real food is all about. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, they're like, oh, it's a tomato, it's, you know, what is this? But <laughs> when you actually work with them and, and show them, like, what to do with a tomato or what to do with a carrot, and then you, they see the whole process and then they eat it, they have a whole new appreciation for it, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's exciting. In, uh, in my class, they use the pasta machine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They just uh-huh. cut the pasta and make it a bit too cheap, you know. Right. I mean, I know you mentioned before that um, working here is very collaborative. You like working with the other chefs. Is it really a lot less competitive here than it is in other cities? It I think it might be more close knit by dint of being smaller. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and you're going to pass a lot of the same clientele around. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. right. 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 Yeah. There's there's a there's a finite number of local people who go to certain kinds of restaurants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's more of a friendly, not competition, mm-hmm. but we all get along. But it's also, we say New York or Los Angeles or a, a big metropolitan city. You know, there's going to be more than one French bistro. Mm-hmm. There's right. going to be more than one resort. There's mm-hmm. going to be more than one osteria and more than one tea house. Whereas here, we all have something different that, you know, mm-hmm. our restaurants are completely different and we have the same kind of, same right. as Christian, same as Andrew. Mm-hmm. And we can, all four of us say that, you know, we have clients that go to all of our restaurants, mm-hmm. but they could go to each one of our restaurants four nights in a row and have a completely different experience and a completely different meal. Mm-hmm. And I'm more than happy to recommend any one of their restaurants. Right. Plus they go to so each other's restaurants. Right. right, yeah, that's the other part too. So I think it, as far as it's being competition, it's just a smaller place, and like you said, tight knit. So mm-hmm. it, it's it's not a direct competition. I mean, you talk about the breweries, there's more local breweries right now, and I, I would assume mm-hmm. they have some pretty fierce competition between each other, but they're mm-hmm. doing different beers, but right. it's more of the same thing. It was, we're both chefs cooking completely different food. We're, or all of us are all chefs, mm-hmm. completely different mm-hmm. food. So it's, right. there's not a, you know, oh, you stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, no, everything's like, been how, done. How do you take that idea and twist it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you twist it and make it your own. Yeah. So that, that's what all of it is. Yeah. I right, mean, you know, exactly. I mean, there's new ideas and, and things, but I mean, it's not right. like, an, it's not like you, you're not reinventing Beef, you're just making it differently. Yeah. Right. Plus, you there know, are a lot of charity events that we do. Too. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. the charity events are great. Mm-hmm. And wine and chili and all of these. Uh, things. That's coming yeah. up soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you something right. that that, uh, that I like about this town is different from New York, where I cooked for most of my life before this, and even Aspen. Um, I love and hate this next thing, and that is that 
the streets roll up at 9.15. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So to a degree, you know, as I yeah. get older as a chef and I have a family, gee, it's nice to be home by 10 o'clock, you know? But, um, you know, whereas in most places, we'd be cooking well past 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. right. And, Coming and from Washington, D.C., yeah. it, was a, it is still a very hard learning where, you know, you're about to eat at 9. Right. Yeah. right. And everything's closing up. And, you know, speaking of D.C., I've lived in D.C. for 25 years. And when I first came, it was a very conservative, boring food scene. Mm -hmm. I think we had Jean-Louis, we had, right. you know, right. then Mark yeah. Miller came and the, the Red Sage right. Red opened. Sage. And it, what's interesting, I just was there this past week, the movement, and I think that it's not s stable like as here. Here you mm -hmm. know that you have certain places and it's, 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 it's nice, whereas now there's a, a the street that's popular and all the restaurants are there and so everybody goes there and all the other streets mm -hmm. that, that are now abandoned, the restaurant right. goes out. So there's a movement where chefs are being are catering to the whims of the, the customers. The geography. Yeah. Right. yeah. And it's I, I'm sure it's very comp it's driving the competition. Right. Whereas here I think it's you're allowed to be honing in on your craft and nurturing the guests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're and, all within and, like 15 minutes of each other. Yeah. With yeah. I mean, you're about 20, yeah. an extra five. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, but you go say, the hill. in Santa Fe, <laughs> in, like, every three steps is one restaurant. Do you think that's uh, a function of the diners you get here relative compared to where they are, say, in New York or D.C.? You know, how is a diner here different? Uh, diners want good food, good yeah. service. I think it's more sophisticated. No matter where you're I mean, they're all well traveled. So I mean, yeah. when yeah. they come here, they expect to get good food, good service. And right. That's what we try and deliver on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also it's different, obviously, a yeah. unique experience mm -hmm. too. I think that the the, um, the change and kind of the progressivism of different kinds of food coming into San Pedro is really great. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like architecture. You know, it's like there's been a resistance to to any kind of modern architecture in Santa Fe because they want to preserve Santa Fe. Right. But you go to downtown London and you see old architecture next to beautiful new architecture, right. and it makes the old architecture even more compelling. Mm -hmm. And I think that in some ways that same kind of analogy is going on in the food thing. People want different kinds of food. It doesn't take away from the traditional mm -hmm. uh, New Mexico food. Everyone who comes here wants to, wants to eat that, but it's mm -hmm. nice to have choices. Yeah. And I think that the local... It, but both the, the local business and the tourist business are looking for, are appreciating the diversity that they right. get here now. It'd be nice if we could get in architecture, huh? It would be. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. <laughs> so, I mean, talking about that, are, is the tourist customer, is the local customer, are they different in any way? I mean, do you, the, are they looking for the same thing? or? or for for me, it's a weird way. Many people go, I, I have to keep like my food kind of like, what people expect to have from one Italian mm -hmm. restaurant. But if some of my customers stay in Italy forever or travel a lot, and they want like particular things, and sometimes like they mm -hmm. call me the, the day before and like, uh, Christian, can we make uh, a risotto? Like I want on the risotto duck and burrata. Like, uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I try to make happy everybody, but right. so, sometimes for me, I, I don't know, I just start to import the flour for the pizza. Mm -hmm. I think it's something about like, it's not much humidity in, in, uh, right, uh -huh. in sure. Santa Fe. Quindi I love to use the, the this Italian zero. Double zero? Yeah, this double zero. But I import it from Italy, not mm -hmm. for be fancy or... Right. It's just why I love the flour. I spend a little bit more, but I know my pizza is gonna be like... Right. It's more for me, why I right. love pizza. I have right. loved this... Right. <laughs> <laughs> why I so, ma so, so much <laughs> pizza. <laughs> but I start to buy the, the, the pizza, the, the flour, first of all for me. Right. And I, and I think the customer understand the difference when they eat that kind of pizza. Right. And, uh, but I don't know, like many times, like, it's with the ingredient or uh, uh, the Italian friends, like they have so many variety of cheese. Mm -hmm. It's impossible right. sometimes to find uh, in the uh, in US. Right, sure. Sometimes I try to make it. Sometimes we're good and sometimes we bad results. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the fun of cooking. Right. But we have some New, some new Mexico cheese that's pretty darn good too. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Green, green chili cheese? Hmm? Green. No, not green chili cheese. <laughs> green chili cheese. <laughs> I'm sure there is some. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So is the tourist season markedly different than the non-tourist season? 
way busier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're definitely seeing a lot more traffic in. You know, I've been here for three years now, mm -hmm. and every year it's been progressively busier and busier, which is great. We've seen a lot more TV shows, a lot more movies filmed here, a lot more, um, a lot more of everything. Mm -hmm. me. And so that's just bringing, generate more tourism, more traffic for all the restaurants and right. hotels. So it's fantastic. Right. Keep it going. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've noticed the same thing. I think I think someone in I don't know whether it's in the tourism department or the city or whatever, but uh, tremendous uh, increase in the number of people coming in for three or four day weekends all year round, uh -huh. um, and it's really been a help for the business. Well, I think tourism Santa Fe has worked hard on that. Randy mm -hmm. Randall, you know, Mayor yeah. Javier. I mean, yeah. a lot of there's been a definite push. Oh, yeah to make something happen in Santa Fe. Right. And we need to because, first of all, we need to keep our young people here. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Right? And sure. so as, as restaurateurs, we're the entry-level jobs for these young people. Mm -hmm. And um, we, our responsibility is to find them, train them, keep it interesting. It doesn't have to be a career. Mm -hmm. Something right. they can do. That's what I'm doing with my own kids. You know, something right. they can do in college to earn a, earn a little pocket money. Right. And. Uh, and then you've got smart people who are coming back during their vacations, coinciding with tourist season, mm -hmm. that have already right. worked with you, that you can plug in, because that's the other thing about a tourist economy is that it ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and so does the staff, because mm -hmm. everybody needs to hire when it's busy. Right, you know? sure. Right. Yeah. Can, yeah. can I have a funny thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I ordered stuff from Europe before, mm -hmm. nobody know like New Mexico, not nobody, but like many people don't know like New Mexico is in the U.S. So the right. time they tell me, oh, you have to pay this extra sh shipping. And like, <laughs> <laughs> after the Breaking Bad, right. oh, yeah. I don't have, uh, I don't have any, any more to sprawl. <laughs> <laughs> so, so business is generally good? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. great. Yeah, very good. And what's great about Santa Fe in New Mexico is that everything is a season here. So now we're in the opera season, mm -hmm. we're going to wine and chili after that, right. balloon fiesta, and we're going to ski season. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's just giant waves going around. Right. Okay. Excellent. They keep uh, us busy. What's that? No, they keep us busy. All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's good. That's good. Excellent. Um, well, talk about business. Um, there's a lot of talk about technology and how it's affecting restaurant businesses, and people talk about the Uberization of restaurants. Um, I haven't seen a lot of that here yet. Do you think that's coming here? You know, whether it's you know mobile apps for ordering or restaurant. Well, I know from the resort I'm in, Four Seasons, is that we have a lot of mobile apps now. As mm -hmm. far as you can order room service through your phone, you can order, make reservations through mm -hmm. your phone. So uh, we're we're getting behind the technology of that, and it's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's something different. Right. Um, is everyone involved with it? Probably not, mm -hmm. but. The people that are involved with that are computer savvy and, and technology savvy. Right. It's something for them to do too. So we first started using iPad based um, ordering for the for the waiters and mm -hmm. credit card swiping um, from day one. Mm -hmm. And generally, eighty five percent, maybe ninety percent of our guests enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think they think it's a little bit uh, quixotic, a little bit odd for. Mm -hmm. French bistro, <laughs> high technology. Especially when it does grandmother cuisine, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and so we do get that resistance of, you know, what's this thing you know, right. that, that you're asking me to sign on and mm -hmm. is it secure and, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a process of education. Right. The one thing I never thought I'd see happen was waiters actually punching in orders, orders. on an iPad because right. that takes some savvy, it takes some practice, right. as opposed to you know writing it down is a lot faster and easier. So about half of the waiters do it that way and then mm -hmm. go to a terminal and plug it in, and the others are very comfortable just w w working right. around the screen. You know, as far as uh, customer-driven apps, you know, it certainly puts you on best behavior, and you want to be very careful about the experience that you're giving right. giving because. Man, that negative review can happen about a minute and a half. Right, yeah. As they're sitting there. Yeah. As they're sitting yeah. there. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I use them more on the back of the house. Like I do my inventory with mm -hmm. the iPad. I make some order with the iPad. Plus right. now there are so many applications. Like I don't know. I love food spotting. Mm -hmm. Just like a, mm -hmm. have a little uh, friendly water yeah. with my competition and all the time. He posts something, I post something. <laughs> mm -hmm. But just is like a little fun, <laughs> funny things to do. Yeah. 
it strikes me that there's like two opposite things are going on. The food's getting slower, back to back slow to like food. traditional slow mm -hmm. food, local, right. uh, and then the technology is getting faster. <laughs> right. And uh, to me, it's like that. You know, I've I've owned I've been in a couple of different businesses other than the restaurant business, and with technology, it's all like you really got to wait and see. Does it really help you be more efficient, mm -hmm. and does it really create a better customer experience? Right. Or is it just a new toy? <laughs> and, uh, well, definitely the iPad and the whole credit card processing is cheaper than if you were buying a whole POS system, mm -hmm. you know, nowadays. So I think that in, it's enhancing the small business yeah. Yeah. owners. I've used an right? iPad-based yeah. service since so, I started. Mm -hmm. We opened right about the same time, right about two mm -hmm. and a half, three mm -hmm. years ago. So mm -hmm. we've been using it the whole time. And right. I agree with you, it's the same. Some, some of the younger servers are much more comfortable with it. Some of the older servers are kind of like, can I just write it down? <laughs> <laughs> but some, you know, it speeds up some of it. They can right. press send right from that table and they don't have to go back and forth. The order's already in and they're already talking to their next table. So right. it, can, it can free up some time of walking for them and, and make some things easier. But like you said, for some people, I mean, I don't think I'd want to be doing a table side. I, yeah, I'd rather yeah. just remember the order like I know how to do, mm -hmm. and, then, and then go punch it in over there. Right. So, so, so sometimes is I, I think like with the technology, like with all the iPhone and stuff, is scary more for the customer. Mm -hmm. Like I see people come in before it, start to taking picture pictures of the plate, mm -hmm. and right. like when I tell the server, go tell them to eat, <laughs> 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 or, it's go, or it's gonna be cold, like, like cold yeah, yeah. stuff like that, or like it's people it's stay pictures. forever on the phone, right. <laughs> Like maybe ten minutes pass before you tell what you want to the server. Mm -hmm. Then after oh the two, the food is taking forever. Like you stay ten minutes up in the yeah. phone before I mean, you have the idea. Like oh it's twenty minutes mm -hmm. and waiting for the food, but right. they're and actually you also ten minutes. See that negative review on TripAdvisor. Yeah, and yeah. But hey, do you think things like TripAdvisor or Yelp are good things? It D depends. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and, no. yes and no. It depends on the person that's actually writing the review. Mm -hmm. You can read a review and you can tell if there's somebody that, I don't want to say anything wrong, but that is obviously trying to attack you, mm -hmm. or you can read other reviews of other people and see like, wow, this person, this can't be true, like, you know, and then there's other reviews that you get great reviews, or mm -hmm. you get a decent, you know, bad review that's an honest bad review. Constructive. Not constructive, not yeah. somebody trying mm -hmm. to bash you, but right. unfortunately in this technology era and how easy it is to post a review or something, people can be very negative, and I think that's a detriment that they don't understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had one one time. The person was complaining about their food online while they were sitting at the bar. Instead of simply just yeah. talking, talking to me that's standing right there, right. Mm -hmm. or a manager, they're complaining and walking out unhappy. Where it's like, you know, if you didn't like that, I would have been happy to take care of you. But you know, it's, it's I saw right. a comic. You know, like 20 years ago, we'd all be sitting at the table talking to each other. Nowadays, everybody sits down for dinner yeah. and they got their phone care, <laughs> playing on their phones. Right, it's like right. They're more concerned with what's going on on their phone on Facebook or. Twitter mm -hmm. or you know what's the Yelp and whatnot right. than actually giving a good review. Right. So if it's a real honest to goodness review, I think it's all great. It's that that everyday or that person that just uh, screw this guy. The, right? the, it know. can be passive aggressive as you just yeah. said. Yes. So mm -hmm. you know, it's like right. it's anonymous, right? So you don't have right. to say something, confront somebody, and say, hey, I really didn't like my the, meal. But, I mean, but give us a chance to fix it. Well, and we try yeah. to, we yeah. try to right. educate no. our servers to, to read body language, you know, and I have to be that guy too when I'm going to a table and asking how it is. I mm -hmm. have to really, you know, and somebody goes, it's fine. So then I have to do a judgment. Is fine good enough <laughs> of their dinner? Is it just sort of their vocabulary too? They're not really yeah. like Gave abusive people, right? <laughs> you know, but it's fine. Okay, that, okay, I've got a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody can't right. make Body eye contact, right. uh, and right. now I have to, like, okay. So, so one, tell me a little bit. You know? Well, mm -hmm. one time I have one horrible review about uh, uh, Wellington Tenderloin, mm -hmm. and I never make it. Couldn't you, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you're special. Uh, last right. night it was horrible. The Wellington Tenderloin is like, and I send a bell, like, I think you eat in another restaurant. Right? Yeah, that's great when that happens. Yeah, right? but, like, you know, yeah. like. Well, you, then, uh, you know, if that's Yelp or TripAdvisor, they'll take that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, but we, uh, we we talk about, but I tell like it's not my restaurant. <laughs> like we don't make that. So sometimes, and, and it's funny sometimes where you uh, 
I don't know, for me, like sometimes after like a busy night, I love to stay and read a little bit of the review and see. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't know, like uh, uh, people have weird ideas. But I, I think it's like, uh, especially for New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, with the fish, uh, I try to overnight my fish, and it's a wild cow. Right. And it's, the mm -hmm. dice is up. Right, sure. In, uh, but this is a little bit confusing for the people. Why so expensive? Mm. And like, is it expensive? Yeah. Why have to overnight it? Why have to buy a wild cow? It right. is like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. exactly. it's totally natural. Right. And, uh, and sometimes th that one is the part that hurt me a little bit yeah. when they say, me like, oh, why so expensive? Why? I do it for you. Right. Like to try to find the best product. Well, plus Santa Fe is an expensive place to do business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but, yeah. But, but you know, like For order like a farm, farm raised fish or a wild one, or like the price. Or, yeah. sure. or GMO free or GEO free. Yeah. We need like a, mm -hmm. kind of want to make understand people, like same for the vegetable we buy at the farmer market. Mm -hmm. The price is up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do it for the, for the customer, right. not for us to, <laughs> to. So I think I commend all of you as restaurateur, it is a very hard business. You know, when Open Kitchen opened, we were also a bistro for a good three and a half years. Mm -hmm. you know, we were in a very, in Falls Church, Virginia. So we um, had a clientele that was provincial somewhat, but you know, it was a well-to-do mm -hmm. area. But yes, as a, an organic, seasonal, freshly made with culinarians as chefs, mm -hmm. you know, our foods were very high, and it was uh, a hard sell. I think it was painful, because it was like the best of times and it was the worst of mm -hmm. times. It was like you're trying to do something for them, the customers, and there's just that disconnect. Mm -hmm. But I think it really comes down to the education, the awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, if they know that the fish is GMO-free. Yeah, if people want to pay for the values of, of what they believe in, mm -hmm. this is what it costs, right. you know, so. Do you actually actively try to educate your consumers? Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to. Mm -hmm. but plus now, it, I think everything is like reaching up like, for, for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and plus the consumers that come to your restaurants are educated to begin with and well traveled so mm -hmm. they know, you know, before they even come to your restaurant what they're getting. Right. Or what they're expecting. What they're expecting. Mm -hmm. Right. Well. Would you like to end, to end by have, saying a few comments um, about the restaurants here? <laughs> We're running. Well, what are you pointing me for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I talk a lot. Well, you started, like, so you're like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, what's exciting about Santa Fe is that it, it's such a, a tight community. I mean, as we mm -hmm. discussed, I mean, we see each other at the market. We do things together with different organizations. Mm -hmm. But what's also exciting is that, you know, we partner up on events. Like we mm -hmm. have, last year we partnered up with Kaiser Farms and did a whole snap to tail dinner where we had six different chefs come in. Right. And, you know, it brings everyone closer together. Right. So this year we're going to be doing something with goats and doing another six course dinner mm -hmm. and having six different chefs come up here and everyone does a different course. And it teaches sustainability, it teaches mm -hmm. uh, sourcing local, buying local, but also it shows that you know, we partner up with every one of us here. So it's all, it brings everyone together. It's a tight community and we do fun things. Right. I think Santa Fe benefits from every restaurant that serves great food and the more the merrier. I think it, it all, all uh, I don't know what the saying is, all, all ships rise in, a, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the tide. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that we're heading in the right direction of that there are more and more interesting places for people to go. It creates people who are interested in food, love to talk about food. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a day doesn't go by when someone doesn't ask me for recommendations on, you know, where else should I eat? And it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to live in a community where you can uh, have chefs like this that you can, uh, you can send people to eat great food. Right. For, for me, I just like follow in love for we with New Mexico the first time, especially with Santa Fe. Where like, uh, uh, thank you to the chef and, uh, mm -hmm. and the customer. Right. Like I feel, I feel like so welcome and really happy. And uh, I want to thanks both like customer and chefs for. Right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Right. Well, um, thank you very much for coming out to talk to us. Um, we hope to have more of these discussions in the future. It's a great way to talk about the our city. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Thank you. It definitely sounds good.